38, among other things, an ideal fuel for the control thrusters of space vehicles should decompose in a spontaneous exothermic reaction when exposed to the appropriate catalyst. Evaluate the following substances under standard state conditions as suitable uh, candidates for fuels. Okay, so can ammonia be used as a fuel for space vehicles? So they give the breakdown of ammonia. They give us the balance equation already. Two NH3 gra- gas will co- decompose into N2 gas plus three H2 gas. Now, in order for this uh, question to work, we have to follow that it's going to decompose in a spontaneous exothermic manner, right? So the first thing is that we need is that we need to make sure that this decomposition is going to be spontaneous. And there's only one variable that will determine if a reaction is spontaneous or not, and that is delta G. Now, under standard state conditions, right, delta G being a negative value is going to give us a spontaneous reaction. That means that we don't need any external energy from an outside source to get this to, you know, be going. And it kind of makes sense, right? If you're using this as a fuel, you don't want to add more energy to the system to get it to go, right? You want it to be spontaneous to just go by itself. So we're looking for a delta G being a negative value. Now, they did say that we're doing standard state conditions, which means that you could go in the back of the textbook to see what those delta G values are. And maybe I will drop this a little bit downward just so that we can have space to work with delta Gs and when we have to work with the other one, we will. Now, what's the formula to find the whole delta G of the reaction from its individual components? That's this formula right here, right? Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rx and his reaction, is the sum, that's this little symbol, sum, which means addition, of all of your delta G of your products minus the sum of all your delta G reactants. So now, are these delta G values going to be the same or are they gonna be different? Well, it goes by the coefficients. You have two NH3s, you have only one N2, right? And you have three H2s. These values in the back of the book are only for one of your compound. So, what you have to do is you have to multiply each value by that coefficient. So I'm going to take my negative 16.5 and times it by 2. 1 times 0 and 3 times 0, right? Because that's what the coefficients say. Now we have to sum them up. Literally, it's N2 plus H2. So, I mean, technically they're both 0, but just to show, you have to add them together. So 0 plus 0 is 0 on this side. And let's go to Calc E, 2 times negative 16.5. Negative 33. So negative 33 for this side. And now I'm going to take these values and plug them into my delta G. So let's see, delta G for that reaction. Let's see, is it going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Zero minus a negative 33. Minus a negative always means a positive, and if you plug it into the calculator, you will see that we get out, under standard state conditions, just a 33. Technically, it'd be a 33.0 with the sig figs. This would be kilojoules. This is a positive answer. Uh Uh-oh. Positives means that they're non-spontaneous. That means that you do need extra energy from an outside source to make this reaction run. Needs like a little extra push, right? Little oomph. So right off the bat, we don't even have to go into exothermic because this was not spontaneous. It was not spontaneous. So would this be a suitable candidate? No, it is not a suitable candidate. And there you go. So... We don't use ammonia in uh, for space, uh, you know, vehicles. Fun fact, and maybe I'll just box that off. That's good enough for now. All right, cool. Um, I think this there's a couple of more parts for this question, so hang tight if you guys are on the playlist, which I highly recommend you guys are. I'll see you. In a, I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right.
，OK， 拜拜。